there's a lot of confusion on electrolyte powder. So I just want to clear this up. It's actually a very interesting topic just to understand what an electrolyte really is. So what is it? Well, an electrolyte is an electrically charged element or mineral. What does that mean? It's basically a mineral that is free, allowing it to be an ion. Now, what is that? Well, normally, if you've ever taken chemistry, you'll see that it has either a negative or a positive charge around this mineral. Without getting too technical, all you need to know is these minerals, when they're free, are ions, which means they can conduct electricity in water. So they have certain charges. And then the body can use these uh, different charged minerals to allow movement. You can kind of think of it like a battery. In a battery, you, you have minerals, which are flowing electrons from one point to another, creating this current. So electrolytes contribute to this electrical uh, phenomena that occurs in the body. So I just want to give you a quick demo to really make sure you get this concept before we move on. So check this out. We have a light source. We have a power source. It's plugged into the wall over here. You can see the cords. And we have an incomplete circuit, okay, electrical circuit. We cut the wire and we put the wire into distilled water. Distilled water is water without minerals and without electrolytes. Electrolytes are electrically charged minerals. Okay, so we have no conductivity here. You can see there, there's no light. So we're gonna take some electrolytes here. And we'll take a scoop of electrolytes and we'll pour it in to this distilled water. And let's see what happens. And now we're gonna mix it with the water to be, make sure it's uh, dissolving and look what's happening. We have a, a complete circuit now. So one of the main purposes of electrolytes in the body is to power the nervous system, which is the electrical system in the body, which powers the muscles and all the different organs. So now that you know that electrolytes provide the raw material to make things more electrical in the body, how does that really relate to um, the function of the body? Well, number one, it's responsible for nerve conductivity, okay? The transmission of nerve impulses. And so if you have a problem with an electrolyte, you have a problem with these impulses and it can affect the pacemaker of the heart. You can have palpitations. You can have various nerve issues. You can have stress in the nervous system. You can just feel stressed, like your nerves are stressed out. And where do those nerves go? They go to muscles, right? So you can have all sorts of muscle problems from muscle cramps during the day or at night, or even weak muscles. The movement of fluid through the body is dependent on these electrolytes as well. So whether you are dehydrated or hydrated depends on these electrically charged minerals in sufficient amounts and in the right balance. For example, if you have too much sodium and not enough potassium, you will get fluid retention. Also, pH is dependent on these electrolytes as well. So each part of your body is a different pH. And so if one part becomes too far to one extreme versus another, you can have all sorts of issues. And the different pHs of the body activate different enzymes. For example, if your stomach pH is not acidic enough, certain enzymes will not be activated and you can't digest food. And then we have this very important end phenomena of electrolytes called the production of energy. So your energy level is highly influenced by these electrolytes as well. There's something called the sodium potassium pump, okay? And this little pump is in all of your cells and it's dependent on sufficient amounts of sodium and potassium. And this pump allows the cell to become like a battery so it can store charge. And 30% of all your energy is dependent on that pump. And it's really easy to get sodium in the diet, but it's more difficult to get potassium simply because our potassium requirements are so high. We need like 4,700 milligrams of potassium every single day. And the question is, where are you going to get that? You can get it from the diet if you like salad and vegetables, which most people don't, uh, because you would have to consume minimally seven to even to 10 cups of salad with other foods to get this 4,700 milligram requirement. So many people enhance their diet with electrolyte powders. So if you're deficient in electrolytes, you can feel weak, fatigue, brain fog, dehydrated, palpitations, dizzy. Why would you be dizzy? Well, because 
of the hydration effect in your blood. So you have enough blood or volume of blood to maintain the blood flow up to your brain. It's kind of like if you were to give blood and take too much blood out and you wouldn't have the volume, you would feel very dizzy and faint. So it's the volume of blood and the pressure, both, by the way, controlled by electrolytes, that can greatly affect um, many different things related to feeling dizzy when you stand up or even high blood pressure. There is a big correlation between low potassium and high blood pressure. I mean, you probably heard your doctor, if you have high blood pressure, he's going to tell you to avoid salt. But unfortunately, patients are not told to increase their potassium levels, which actually is more important. And if you're deficient in potassium, you can have cramps in your calves, especially when you're sleeping at night. All right, next topic I want to get into is um, how do you create a deficiency of electrolytes? Well, many different ways. By consuming refined carbohydrates or sugars, you'll retain sodium, but you'll deplete potassium, magnesium, calcium, and other things as well. Uh, being on a diuretic can cause you to become deficient in sodium as well as potassium as well. Being stressed out with high levels of cortisol can deplete these electrolytes. Having food with hidden MSG, monosodium glutamate, can deplete you of potassium. You'll wake up the next day with a lot of fluid retention and not sure where that came from. In that situation, the thing to do is to take more potassium as an electrolyte to push out this excess sodium. Drinking too much water can deplete you of these electrolytes because they dilute the electrolytes, especially sodium, and you can create a condition called hyponatremia. That's low sodium, and uh, that could be very, very serious. Your brain can swell. You can go into a coma. So drinking too much water is not always the best thing to do if you want to be hydrated. To be hydrated, you need both fluid and electrolytes. Now, vomiting, diarrhea can also create a deficiency of these electrolytes. Being a diabetic, you're going to be deficient in these electrolytes, especially potassium. And if you're sweating, as in exercise, you can very easily end up with an electrolyte deficiency. So speaking about sweating and exercise, there's two general types of electrolytes out there. You have electrolytes that are more for sport type things involving minerals that replace sweat, and those usually are higher in sodium. And then you have other types of electrolytes, like this one right here, which is my brand, which of course I'm not biased on the quality of ingredients in this product. But this one, being a regular electrolyte, has very high levels of potassium, like 1,000 milligrams of potassium, 75 milligrams of calcium, and 60 milligrams of chlorides, and only 40 milligrams of sodium per serving size. That's then compared to the sport version, which is... 500 milligrams of sodium. So when you're exercising, you lose a lot of sweat, you lose a lot of sodium, so you need more sodium. But when you're not exercising, okay, you don't need that much sodium. And so if you were to take a sport electrolyte with a lot of sodium um, and not exercise, you're going to end up with fluid retention. But on the flip side, if you take a regular electrolyte with low sodium while you're exercising with all this potassium, that too can create another imbalance. So the regular electrolytes should be taken when you're not exercising. Now, will it be a problem if you take this while you exercise? No, you just have to make sure that you take extra sea salt during the day to replace what's missing when you sweat. Now, I just want to show you the relationship between these three sport electrolyte beverages or powders. Okay, so of course, we I'll put mine up there. Now, if we take a look at Gatorade, it has uh, 75 milligrams of potassium, and Powerade has 35 milligrams of potassium, and Dr. Berg's Sport Electrolyte has 1,000 milligrams of potassium. So you can see there's a huge difference in potassium. Now, what about sodium? Gatorade has 270 milligrams of sodium, Powerade has 150 milligrams, and Dr. Berg's Sport Electrolyte has 500 milligrams. And Gatorade and Powerade also threw in some phosphates or phosphorus, and I don't know the amounts because it doesn't tell you on the label, but basically they're giving you three electrolytes, okay, with that product. And my sport electrolytes is giving you five electrolytes in much higher amounts with all of the trace minerals. And the biggest benefit is there's no sugar. It's with organic stevia with natural flavoring and no hidden maltodextrin, which I'm going to come back to in a, in a minute. Gatorade, on the other hand, has not just sugar, but dextrose, which is a synthetic type of sugar, totaling 34 grams of sugar per bottle. 
34 grams. That's a lot of sugar. And the interesting thing about sugar is it tends to deplete electrolytes, especially potassium. Powerade has fructose, giving you 21 grams of sugar. So Gatorade and Powerade has a few electrolytes and a lot of sugar. Now, of course, they're going to taste good and they might appear to work, but honestly, it's just colored sugar water. And they probably use artificial colorings and probably artificial sweeteners. I don't know. I want to touch on this potassium just a little bit more. Potassium also helps with insulin sensitivity. If you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to regulate your blood sugars, you want to make sure you have enough potassium because potassium can help those conditions. Potassium also regulates pulse rate. If you're low in potassium, your pulse rate tends to go higher. Your blood pressure tends to go higher. And the other interesting thing about potassium is that it's part of the glycogen storage of sugar in your, in your liver and your muscles. The way you store sugar is through all these little sugar uh, glucose molecules strung together, okay, and that's called glycogen, and you need potassium for every molecule of glucose to store it. So there's a lot of potassium that's locked up within this glucose molecule, as well as a lot of water. In fact, there's three times as much water or per gram of glucose, and then you have potassium with that. So when someone is on the ketogenic diet, and they get rid of a lot of the stored glucose as glycogen, they also can get rid of the fluid that comes with it. This is why they lose water weight within the first week or so, or two weeks, as well as a loss of potassium. And this is one reason why if you're going to start the ketogenic diet, you want to take electrolytes at the same time to make sure you're not deficient in potassium and magnesium and other electrolytes. Now, one more really interesting thing about electrolyte powder that you probably have never heard before. You want to make sure that when you get an electrolyte powder, it doesn't have hidden sugars or starches or carbohydrates as in maltodextrin. Maltodextrin is considered a starch, even though on the glycemic index, it's higher than glucose. It's like way above 100, and yet it's not classified as a sugar, even though it behaves worse than a sugar. And a lot of times they use the maltodextrin in the flavorings of a lot of these different products, both natural and artificial flavorings. In fact, I had to pay more for my flavorings of my different electrolyte powders to make sure that they did not include this maltodextrin in the products. But there's a very simple, simple way to figure out if your electrolyte powder or other products have this hidden maltodextrin, and it's called a starch test. And all you do is you put some of these electrolytes in a little glass, okay, dissolve it, put a couple drops of iodine, and if it turns purple, okay, it has hidden starch in it, most likely this maltodextrin. If it doesn't turn dark purple and it stays kind of yellow, like iodine should look like, it does not have a starch in it. Okay, one last point. How much sport electrolyte powder should someone take per day? And they come in a single serve stick pack, okay? So one scoop would be one of those stick packs in some water per day. Now, because of the censoring and the suppressing of the algorithms on YouTube, it's becoming more difficult to find my content. And there's a lot of content that I cannot put on YouTube, unfortunately. So to make sure you have full access of all my information, go to drberg.com and subscribe to my newsletter by clicking the link down below in the description. I will see you on the other side. Since we're on the topic of this important mineral potassium, if you haven't seen this video, check it out. I put it up right here.